So Friday saw the release of Ubuntu 23.10 to a bit of fanfare and a bit of controversy. Hi, I'm Gardner. Let's get into this. Now, if you're not familiar, Ubuntu is one of the most popular Linux distributions out there, and new OS versions are released every six months, generally in April and October. Most of these releases are supported for nine months, uh, with bug fixes and app updates coming alongside it. However, there are a handful that come with LTS or long-term support versions. These LTS versions have support for five years. Well, it's October and we have seen 23.10 release and this is a non-LTS version. Now this is an incremental update with a new version of GNOME desktop environment, uh, an updated kernel and drivers, as well as new software support. There's a new App Center, for example, in Ubuntu 23.10. It's written in Flutter, which is an interesting choice for a desktop PC. It's faster than the previous App Center, called Ubuntu Software, and it's got an improved design and allows for the installation of .deb packages, as well as snaps. As far as software goes, you'll have your normal selection of Mozilla Firefox, Thunderbird, LibreOffice, Shotwell, Transmission, and of course there's core software upgrades like coming stock with kernel 6.5, Mesa 23.2.1, Blue Z 5.68, Network Manager 1.44, and Pipewire 0.3.79. Now one of the most interesting things about this release of Ubuntu is a shift in the way uh, this distro handles pre-installed software. If you just install Ubuntu 23.10 with the default settings, the pre-installed software is about as bare bones as it gets. Options like the aforementioned Office Suite LibreOffice, Email Client Thunderbird, Photo Management Tool Shotwell, and Music Player Rhythmbox, all staples of previous Ubuntu releases are left on the cutting room floor here. Now you can choose to install these pieces of software with the appropriate selection in the installer, and they're even included with the installation media but by default, they're excluded from a basic system installation. And speaking of installation, we need to talk about what happened with the Ubuntu installer. Now, in a process called Internationalization and Localization, or I18N, the Ubuntu installer project accepts community-made translations of strings of text used in the user interface. Now, this is a largely uneventful process that relies on the goodwill and contributions of multilingual free software enthusiasts. Well, things being what they are in the world of geopolitics, it seems that someone pushed some bigoted gibberish to the Ukrainian localization of the Ubuntu installer. Now, I say incomprehensible because when you use something like Google Translate on the legitimate Ukrainian language translations, they read like English strings, where the strings in question are stilted and broken, as if the person defacing the Ukrainian translation here uh, didn't really speak Ukrainian. Well, the issue here is that the translations, for lack of a better word, made it into the official 23.10 release. To Ubuntu's credit, these malignant strings were found by end users and Ubuntu responded within hours of their official release, removing the ISOs from being available for download and issuing a statement. Quote, a community contributor submitted offensive Ukrainian translations to a public, third-party online service that we use to provide language support for the Ubuntu desktop installer. Around three hours after the release of Ubuntu 23.10, this fact was brought to our attention and we immediately removed the affected images. After completing initial triage, we believe that the incident only impacts translations presented to a user during installation through the live CD environment not an upgrade. During installation, the translations are resident in memory only and are not propagated to the disk. If you have upgraded to Ubuntu Desktop 23.10 from a previous release, then you are not affected by this issue. The impacted images were Ubuntu Desktop 23.10 and Ubuntu Budgie 23.10. Please keep in mind that translations are data files that support internationalization of applications. These files are updated with the support of third-party online systems with contributions from individuals all around the world that then get integrated into Ubuntu. It's unfortunate when that path of collaboration is undermined and used as a mechanism of social aggression. Canonical and Ubuntu do not condone hate speech or offensive language of any kind per our code of conduct. Again, I commend Canonical for treating this with urgency and as a potential security threat. While this is moderately embarrassing for Ubuntu, I believe it's more shameful for the person who contributed this corrosive vitriol. The problem is, in their eyes, they see this as some kind of sick victory. 
However, the issue here is that a supply chain attack like this is hard to defend against. The intellectual child that submitted these malicious translations, they're probably going to go unpunished. While it will become harder for well-meaning people to contribute genuine translations, and it will increase the overhead for open source projects to include those translations going forward. Now, it's easy to write all of this off as a troll, but this kind of trolling undermines the ad hoc institution of free software. Ours is an institution built on mutual trust and collaboration. When those channels are attacked, when the trust we rely on is undermined by acts of petty hate, it harms us all. We, we can't give in to apathy or admit defeat here. We need to find ways to hold folks accountable and prevent this kind of attack going forward. Today, it's someone spreading anti-Semitic and anti-Ukrainian messaging. Tomorrow, malicious translations could actually impact the security and IT decision-making for thousands of people at a national level. Inverting the encrypt entire disk option, misleading users on which disk partitions are going to be formatted, or what kind of passwords are supported, there's potential harm here, and we as a community must come out of this stronger. My name is Gardner. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.